Hey brothers and sisters, Francis Enrose here. It's been a while. I'm bringing a word today. Um, I've been teaching, <clears throat> well, I've been doing the Altar of Love. Uh, I know I have been doing videos, but I'm, I'm still working. I'm still, uh, you know, doing what I do. Uh, I do a lot of, for lack of a better word, exorcisms <laughs> at church, and I still take cases uh, over the phone. Um, but my life has changed a lot, so I don't have as much free time as I had before. Um, but that's okay. But I'm still working and uh, still doing stuff, and I'm still getting words. Uh, I have some lessons that I probably need to start doing. I think the longer that I've been away, the harder it was to get back. So today I thought I would just turn the camera on and start talking. Um, the Altar of Love is probably the end of my ministry in that it's it's the culmination of everything that I've ever learned brought together um, in a fashion or a way that it kind of explains how the enemy works you know the way that he goes about doing what he does and how we overcome it the tools and 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 the uh, things that God gave us to defeat him you know um, we're down here with the monster I mean Satan is the ultimate monster um, I always liken him to to that scene in Terminator, uh, where where that guy says, "Look, that thing is out there, and it it doesn't rest, it doesn't get sick, it doesn't take vacations, it doesn't need to eat, and he absolutely will not stop till you're dead." And that pretty much defines Satan. His goal is to kill us, steal everything we have, and destroy us. Jesus said, "Satan comes but to kill, steal, and destroy." But I have come but to bring, give you life and life more abundantly. So we have to deal with what we have here. You know, we have an enemy who's bent on destroying us. And we we got to deal with him. We, we have to come to terms with who we are and what we're up against. Um, you know, when I used to compete, one of the things that I did was I used to keep a notebook and I would, I would log the um, attributes of the other fighters that in case I came across them in the competition, I had a strategy. I knew what to do. You, I would write down their strengths and their weaknesses. And so, I, you know, and it, it's, it's important to know to do that. you got to know who you're fighting. No military goes into battle without, you know, studying his, his opponent their opponent to understand where their strengths and weaknesses are to formulate a plan well you know our father knew who he you know who we were up against and and he didn't leave us down here without the weapons to defeat satan he did we have weapons all right and basically what it comes down to and what the altar of love taught me was we are the authority we are the weapon whatever we speak with our mouth and believe in our heart these things will come to pass jesus said behold I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Well, the word trample means to tread on, all right? To tread on, to trample means to step on. And that means to have complete mastery over. Like, you're standing there and there's a cockroach at your feet, you know? Is there any scenario where that cockroach can avoid getting stepped on, crawl up your leg, bite you on the juggler vein, and kill you? No, it's impossible. It can't happen. We completely dominate a cockroach, all right? It has, there's no chance, no, none. Well, that's what he's saying when he says, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. Well, serpents and scorpions are what? That's Satan and the demon forces. And over all the power of the enemy. Well, how much is all? All is all. So if we have the authority to trample on, to completely master serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, well, how much power does the enemy have on us? None. None at all. So then he says, uh, he says, and nothing shall hurt you. So we have this thing that's called authority, and authority is the legal right, like the sheriff. We're the sheriff now. We got the gun. We got the badge. You know, but the sheriff has to be proactive. He's got to go out there and search out the criminal and, 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 arrest him and take him into custody and bring him in and bring him before the court and and have him set before the trial and have him sentenced and put him in in prison well when when the word says he says um no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises against you you condemn so we have the authority to condemn them well that word condemn means we're the judge jury and the executioner we determine the punishment. So God gave us the authority to defeat Satan, 
and the ability to punish him. And that was the brilliance of the altar of love that he showed me, that we're the ones with the power and authority. So if we're the ones with power and authority, why are we always messed up, broke, bust, and disgusted, you know, and, and everything bad happens? Because Satan steals our authority. He, he uses it against us. And, and, you know, and I've taught this before, and I just wanted to go over it briefly because there was something new that I, that I saw uh, a couple of weeks ago that I need to talk about. So when Adam was created, he was given dominion or authority over the earth. Satan had been stripped. He was, his authority was stripped from him when he was cast to earth. So he's looking at this mere mortal going, you know, I'm subservient to him. He's immortal. So when Satan gets Adam and Eve to sin, right, authority is taken away from them and given to Satan. Now Satan wields authority for 4,000 years, and then here comes Jesus, and he defeats him. Now, how do I know that Satan had it? Because when he took Jesus up on, on the hill and he said, look at all the kingdoms, I have authority over all of them. If you bow down and worship me, I'll hand the authority to you. Jesus didn't argue with him. He didn't say, no, you don't have authority, because he knew it was right. And how did Adam lose it? Sin. So what God showed me was he said there's four ways. There's basically five, but we're going to work count. We're going to deal with four because the fifth one is a little trickier and you got you got to read my book to see it. Or maybe I'll just preach it one day. So the four ways are number 1 if you do nothing. If you do nothing, Satan can use your authority. So you got a demon standing there going, you know, what are you going to do? The doctor comes out of the room and he says, "Look, your son has 105 temperature. I believe He's got meningitis, but we're losing him. I think he's going to die. There's your opportunity right there to either assume authority or to give it up. And you got that demonic spirit standing there going, what are you going to do? You're going to assume authority here because you don't? I'm going to kill that boy. But see, when we stand up and we assume authority, we take the authority, that which is ours, and we put it into motion. Right and overcome because remember we're judged during execution or whatever we speak with our mouth and believe in our heart these things will come to pass unless we give up our authority. See how it works? So we have this thing called authority which is like a superpower and we either use it or we give it away. If we give it away then he uses it against us and this authority is so powerful he can destroy us with it. Alright, so one is if we do nothing. Number two is when we walk in sin. When we walk in willful sin we give up our authority. Just like Adam and Eve. Adam sinned, he gave the authority to Satan. That's how sin works. Right? So when God gives us the Ten Commandments and he says, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, or do this, do this, do this, do that, he's telling us basically that this is for your own good so you don't give up your authority. So that you can put, keep yourself in a position of power and authority over the enemy. Don't do these things. It's for our own good, you know. It's like if you if you tell your kid, you you know, you got a you got a three and a half year old, and and you've been ironing, and the iron's hot, and he goes over towards it, and you tell him, hey, hey, don't touch that iron, you'll get burned. You're doing, you're telling him that for his own good. Now, if the kid touches the iron, that's his own darn fault. You can't control that, right? Especially when he's at that age where he really understands yes and no. Now, if he's like one and a half, two, maybe he don't get it yet. But when they're three and a half going on four, they understand that. So this is for us, you know, following the law of the Ten Commandments is for us so that we don't sin, so that we don't give up our authority. Okay, number three is with your words. Whatever you speak with your mouth and believe in your heart, these things will come to pass. When you speak negatively about your situation, you hand the authority to Satan to do that thing to you. He then goes up to the throne room and says, he said it. He said it. He said it so I can do it. And God, because he's a righteous God and can't break his own law, allows it. So you give up your authority when you do nothing. You give up your authority when you sin. You give up your authority when you use words against you. Satan, remember, Satan's always planning, trying to plant that thought in your head. What did Jesus say? He said, take no thought saying. Take no thought saying. Take no thought. The thought comes in. You either take it or you reject it by the words that come out of your mouth. When the doctor calls you up and he says, I'm sorry to tell you, you've got cancer. And you turn around and you tell your wife, honey, I've got cancer. You own it. It's yours. You said it gave up your authority. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that you want to walk around in, in uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, L like you're oblivious to, 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 to facts and, and, and things, uh, in denial, all right? You can say, hey, baby, uh, the doctor report just came back, and the scientific results were 
there were cancer cells found in my blood. That's a fact. You're not claiming it. You're not saying, I have it, it's mine, I own it. You're just stating a fact. Hey, let's pray about this thing and take authority over it and kill that stuff. Kill it. Why? Because no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises against you, you condemn. You have authority. And how do I know this works? Because I've been doing it now for over a year. I've been doing it every time somebody calls me, every time I take them through the altar of love, every time I go to church, I get a tap on my shoulder and there's some crazed, whack-out lunatic in a room with demonic spirits in him and, and I have to go in there and perform an exorcism and, and 10 minutes into it, the, 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 and, and I'm telling you, it's several times it's been just like the exorcist where they're going nuts, freaking out in their chair, where I have actually sat across from them, it's a small room. It's a small room. I'm no more than four feet away. And I'm thinking to myself, is this guy going to jump on me and attack me? I mean, they're literally going insane in their chair. And then all of a sudden, it'll stop. And they'll go, look around the room and go, wow. When did I get in here? Who are you? I mean, I've been in there for half an hour and they just came out of it and it happens all the time so I know this works I've been going through this thing I've seen cancer be completely healed I've seen you know tumors dry up to nothing I have seen miracles oh, man I could go on for days I could go on for days and um, so the the fourth way is when you don't walk in love when you walk out of love love is so important when you walk out of love it strips your authority Right? And there's a whole section in my book about witchcraft of the heart, which is another form. But those are the four. So I, I was, I was um, going through some cases and I was taking people through some stuff. And um, what happened was uh, I, had a, I had cases, pretty much every case, where there would, everybody would get healed of everything except for one thing would stay. One thing would always stay. And what God showed me was that it was for training. Because when you do something day after day, week after week, month after month, it becomes a habit. All right? But if he heals everything and everything is stripped away, that person will never do that thing again. But if they don't do it on a regular basis, they'll forget how to do it and they won't do it. So then a month, three months, six months down the road, when, when Satan returns, because you know, just like when Satan attacked Jesus in the desert three times and Jesus said, it is written and he defeats him, the Bible says, and Satan left Jesus for a season. So we know he returns. He's going to always come back and test you, all right? So this thing about authority is pretty intense. Satan understands that when we get an understanding of it, he's going to lose it. And, and, and he's not used to that because he's been hiding authority from mankind for, well, ever since Jesus defeated him on the cross, all right? So um, he's been using our authority and using it like he had it this whole time. Even though he was stripped of it, he's been walking around with it. So now the cat's out of the bag and we're teaching this thing called authority and he's furious. Because for the first time in 2,000 years, people are starting to understand who they are and what they are. What they were created to be. Well, Satan can't have that. So I'm telling you, when you start walking in authority, you start exercising authority, you're going to get some resistance. Because he knows if he can get you to not understand it, to not think that it works, to, to go through some trials and tribulations that you might let it go. You might give up. You might abandon this thing. And if you do, he wins. Then he can go back to using it again. But if you get through this thing, if you come through the other side, what you realize is he's got nothing on you. You know, I did one case. Um, uh, these, two, these two ladies... Uh, contacted me. It was a, a, a woman and her daughter, and they got completely healed, got completely delivered out of everything. They were targeted individuals. There was a lot of stuff going on, sicknesses and diseases, and she was completely healed. And, you know, the, 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 the mother was telling me, she said, you know, for the next couple of days, it was kind of intense because I told her, I said, look, you can't give up. The enemy's going to attack you. You got to stay on this authority thing. You got to assume authority over it every day. But, 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 and she said, the first, the very next day, it was really bad. Satan came in like a fury. I mean, she was binding and taking authority all day long. And the next day was a little less. And the next day, a little less. By the fourth day, it was only a couple incidents. By the fifth day, it was gone. Because he realized she wasn't going to give up. So you can't, you can't give up on this thing called authority. You have to maintain it. You have to assume it. You have to stay with it. And another thing that God showed me, and this is what I wanted to talk about today, was this. Regarding, well, regarding just about anything. All right, let's say it's, um, 
it's a sickness, it's a disease, it's an injury or an ache or a pain or an illness, a, you know, something, something. And um, you take authority over it. And, and look, and I'm not doing it all because there's a lot to this. There's there's casting out things. There's a, there's a repenting for stuff that takes authority back. And I've done it before. I'll do some more of that. But I, I'm not going to go into all that right now. So let's say you're, you're assuming authority over something that you've got authority over. And um, and the pain goes, but it comes back, right? What's happened there? Well, well what the, the Holy Spirit showed me, or even that it doesn't go, is that Satan has unlimited resources, and he will continue to send another spirit in place of that spirit that you sent to the pit of hell to take over and, and do that job. So in our mind, we think it didn't work. Oh, man, when he showed it to me, it was brilliant. I mean, I just was standing there, and it's weird because I, I actually mem remember this stuff in context. I know where I was standing in my house when I saw the vision. And what I saw was uh, t taking authority over a demonic spirit and casting it off and another spirit coming immediately on and assuming that position of the, of the old spirit. So in my mind, I thought it didn't work. There's something else there. You know, I, it, it, but what happened was it was just a demonic spirit. He has unlimited resources. He has billions of of demons at his disposal and what we do is we have to continue to take authority over that and cast it to the pit of hell if another one comes take authority over that until he realizes that we're not going to stop we're not going to give up because another thing that I saw was that these demonic spirits are manipulating many cases at one time for instance they might you're not the only person they're working on they might have 20 other cases going on with the you know the guy next door who's he's working on him to commit suicide and you know this person that person this person well when you take that spirit you strip it of its authority and you cast it to the pit of hell what happens is and you command it you tell it never to return See, again, you're the judge, you're an executioner. I get, you know, get creative. I tell them to burn it 10,000 degrees. I have them dismembered. I have all their members, their arms, legs, torso, head, all going into different pits, never to be rejoined, because that's just a hideous thing when all your body parts, imagine if all your body parts are scattered all over the place and you're conscious and you can't get back together, right? And never to, re never to leave that pit. So they can't be reunited, they can't ever leave, and the Bible says this affliction shall not return a second time, so that that spirit can't come back to you ever again, ever again. It's bound there, all right? So every time they attack you, you send it to the pit of hell to be bound. Another one, boom, you send it. Another one, boom, you send it. Another one, boom, you send it. Well, every time you do that, all the plots, all the plans, all the things, schemes that they had going in other people's lives, they're left up in the air, and another demonic spirit has to take those over. And that disrupts all those plans. That guy might have been really close to suicide. You understand what I'm saying? So eventually what happens is they're like, whoa, they know who they are now. They understand what they're doing. Let's stop. Let's leave them alone. And you'll actually notice, what I noticed was, there's a period of time when you're kind of left alone. They don't bother you. Everything isn't going wrong anymore. That's the... That's actually the scariest place to be because that's when your defenses go down. That's when you get tired, when you get lazy, when you when you start like you you let your guard down. All right, you start going through life like everything's okay, and that's when you know you, that's when you're most vulnerable. So being in a position where there's something you're taking authority over, always being in a position where you're exercising that tool is not a bad place to be. It's not a bad place to be at all. Because you're practicing, you're exercising, taking authority, and 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 you're you're doing something that you look. We have to do this thing. We have to assume authority over everything, everything. Why? Because we're the rulers here on earth. We we handle God's business. You know, it's like if your daddy owned a a a, a, a great factory and he wanted to retire and he turned it over to you and it was your job to run it. This earth is under our rule. You know, it's it's our dominion now. So anyways, it's what I wanted to talk to you about today, and I just wanted to say, hey, I, I'm, I'm going to start doing short videos. This one's 19 minutes. I'm going to cut it off here. Um, you know, I can go on, so I can talk for 30, 40 minutes easy. But um, I just wanted to say I missed you guys. Uh, hello to everybody out there. Hello, Elizabeth. Um, <laughs> I get all your, your, your texts and, and stuff, and you've just grown into the most awesome woman of God. I sure appreciate you. Uh, and, and, and all my friends, all my uh, 
uh, uh, subscribers. Just wanted to say, hey, love you guys. I'll talk to you later, and I'm going to come on and, and talk some more about the altar of love and talk about authority. I'm going to talk about identity and some other stuff that's in the book that uh, I haven't preached on before. New stuff, different stuff, all right? So, um... If you'd like, you can get the book. Uh, you can buy it off Amazon now. Um, uh, there are some typos in it. But if you can get past that, I guess I sent the wrong file to the to the publisher. It's got a lot of crazy punctuations. When I read it, I'm like, I didn't write that. <laughs> I didn't do that. It wasn't me. I can write better than that. But hey, I I guess I just sent the wrong file. I don't know. But anyways, um, I'm doing okay chugging along um, looking for a new place to live an apartment and having to pack up and move a five-bedroom home alone not fun and um, I guess that's all I'll talk to you later have a nice day bye